How's it going? Adam Drake here, and today we're going to talk about tire selection. Now, I'm going to do two separate videos. Today's video is going to be on uh, the compound of tires when selecting your tires. Video two will be selecting the correct tread pattern. The reason why I'm starting with compounds first is because I feel compounds are more important than the tread pattern. Now, both are extremely important. Tire setup, let's face it, is probably 80 or 85% of your setup, especially for eight scale off-road. But first and foremost, it's really important to choose the correct compound. For example, we have a reflex tire here, which is one of the most popular tires in eight scale. If you go to a track that requires, or the so let's say the best tire is a green reflex and you don't have a green reflex, but you have a green stalker or even a green rehab, and then you have reflex in say blue or aqua, you're gonna wanna go with compound first. So a green stalker would be better than a blue reflex, or a green rehab would most likely be better than a reflex that's in the wrong compound. So. Again, both tread pattern and compound are extremely important, but first and foremost, you wanna make sure you have the correct compound for the conditions. So I'm gonna just kinda of do a little bit of a rundown of different track conditions and scenarios and the compounds that I choose. So here in Southern California, the majority of our tracks are run dry on practice days and wet for racing. So typical race days, they'll water the track every other race. So in round one, the odd races, so one, three, five, seven, all get water. In round two, it'll be all the even races, so two, four, six, eight, so on and so forth. Then a lot of times the races go into the night and they'll water kind of as needed, usually every longer main, but sometimes they'll skip a main here and there. But for the most part, the tracks hold a fair bit of moisture. So because of that, in Southern California, we pretty much only use uh, green compound primarily and sometimes blue in the summers. That's because the tracks have some moisture. So green being super soft, blue being soft. Those two compounds pretty much accommodate us at any of the tracks, Thunder Alley, Palm Desert, The Dirt, Revelation. Um, those are the most popular compounds for us. Now on practice days, that's a little bit different. So it's the same dirt at all of those tracks, um, you know, whether it's during the day or at night, they're just prep different. So we'll use Thunder Alley for an example, because again, it's kind of my home track, closest track to us. When it's dry during the day, it's extremely abrasive, really high bite. And if you were to stay on a green compound, the car would be really aggressive the tire wear uh, would be pretty high. So during the day, we'll use like a blue compound or even an aqua compound. J Concepts now has newer aqua compounds, A3 and A4 that I believe are available. Um, but for me, I tend to stick with green when it's wet, even green sometimes when it starts to dry out or I'll switch to blue. And then when it's bone dry, I'm pretty much on either um, blue compound or A2 compound. I kind of skip over A3 and A4. Um, I just feel like if the track is extremely abrasive, I'll just go all the way to A2. So just kind of as a note, like I mentioned, when the track is moist, you're going to want to be on green or blue. If, if it's a extremely, extremely cold, like sometimes at the races, the indoor arena races, like in Washington, you could get away with using black compound. Um, some of those events, guys will sauce tires, and when you sauce tires, usually it kind of eats the rubber and it makes the wear a lot faster. I like sometimes using a black compound with no sauce, so it has similar driving or feeling characteristics on the track, um, just normally you'll get a little bit better tire life out of that. Now, when you start to feel like a blue compound is a little bit edgy or too aggressive, 
And also if you're a little bit concerned with tire wear, that's when you could switch to the aqua compounds. Those are basically long wear compounds. They're gonna be a little bit more stable to drive, carry a little bit more rolling speed, um, you know, when the conditions are dry and abrasive. Now, if you try using an aqua compound when the track is damp, it's not, it's gonna kind of feel like it's on top of the track. It's not gonna really be in the track as much as green or blue. So um, just to kind of make, make mental note, um, you're gonna wanna use the aqua compounds when your car feels over aggressive or if you're concerned with tire wear and primarily when it's dry and abrasive. So we'll go a little bit into um, another thing that you can change um, that will kind of help like split the compounds a little bit. So if you're running green compound and then you feel like that's giving you the most grip, but you're losing a little bit of stability, I have some videos talking about the J Concepts bands that go over the foam. So that would be kind of the next step to help um, allow you to run a super soft tire, but then have the stability that's closer to a soft or a blue compound. And then one step further than that um, would be to glue the insert to the wheel. So the bands and gluing the insert to the wheel have similar handling characteristics. It's just the bands are kind of like a half step. Gluing the insert really locks the insert into the wheel and it's going to take away a little bit of forward bite. The insert's not going to grow as much. It's not going to be as pillowy through the bumps, but it is going to help with side bite and stability. So again, as far as the compounds go, it's always good to ask local guys, um, you know, what, what compound works best for them, but it can vary a little bit on your, depending on your car. Some cars just tend to like a little bit harder tire or even how you drive. If you drive more aggressive, you may want a little bit harder tire. Um, if you're really smooth and precise, you can run the softer tire. It's gonna generate the most grip. Um, but if you start to push, especially in a longer race, um, you may get a little bit of wiggle because of the compound being too soft. Um, as far as um, compound in longer races, now, this is kind of like an in-between. So this is this will fall some on video two of selecting the right tires and this video. So if you're running and you're afraid or you think green compound is the best compound or even you think blue is the best compound, but you're running a smaller pin like the Reflex, you have a long mane, this is where it becomes really difficult. Do you switch to a harder compound that's gonna last longer, or do you switch to a more dense tread pattern that's gonna last longer? And that just really comes from experience. It's, it's tough um, to, again, pick the right tread pattern and the right compound, but you have to just kind of do a little bit of testing and work yourself. In some cases, you would wanna go from a reflex to maybe a stalker or a rehab or possibly even a detox in the same compound to make sure you have the correct compound that's giving you the right amount of grip, but then you have the right tread pattern to give you enough life. Um, or it could be that you just are really set on the reflex and you're willing to give up a little bit of grip to gain some stability and also gain a little bit of wear, maybe you would just switch to a blue compound. Um, but again, I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about all the different compounds from J Concepts and also allow you to, if you run a different tire manufacturer, just to give you a little bit of insight on my opinion, which is compound over tread pattern. Again, both are extremely important, but tread pattern is not quite as important as choosing the correct compound for the conditions you race in.